Sometimes, some of the iPhone's best features seem to be hidden. I have no idea why that is. In this video, I'm going to dig up a handful of those features and show you just what I mean. Hi, my name is Rich, and while I make a lot of videos on how to use your iPhone and iPad chock full of helpful tips, I honestly can't remember half of them. They're all good things, but in the way I use my phone day to day, a lot of those tips just don't come into play. But today's video is different. The tips I'll cover today answer real world problems, at least for me. So the first tip is on taking a quick note. You know, I struggle with this all the time. You know, was, iPhone can do a lot of different things, but I usually just pick up a piece of paper if I need to write down a phone number or take some little quick note. But I think I've solved that problem now. Next is how to create a callback reminder right from the recent call list in the phone app. This is a great tip. And speaking of the recent call list, did you know you can review someone's call history? I had no idea that was there, but it really is helpful. I'll show you how to quickly find photos in messages. This is something that comes up with me all the time. And then lastly, we'll look at photo cleanup, but more importantly, how to get info from a screenshot. It's crazy what this can do with Apple intelligence. By the way, I'm running iOS 26 on my iPhone 17, so you'll need to make sure you've got at least that version or later installed and an iPhone 15 Pro or newer for Apple intelligence features. But maybe the best thing you can do before trying to figure out what iOS version you have or, you know, which iPhone you have, is just watch the video and see if any of this stuff might be helpful for you. If it is, then you can figure that stuff out. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first tip is just how to add a quick note to Apple Notes. Sometimes you just need to jot something down really quickly. And for me, that's always just been grab a piece of paper and a pencil somewhere and jot it down. But this is actually, I think, going to solve that problem. So there's two ways that you can do this. The first thing you can do is add quick notes to Control Center. So if you swipe down on your phone and get to Control Center, and maybe you have a whole bunch of stuff here. I've cleaned it out and put just a few of my things in here. But regardless, you open up Control Center, you tap and hold, and you tap Add Control. And then I'm just going to search for a quick note up here. So I don't have to go through. And there it is. So I'm going to add that to it. And now, and make it a little bigger so that I can see what that means. And now I've added a quick note to Control Center. So now, if I need to take something down very quickly and I've got my phone with me, I can just swipe down, tap on Quick Note, and I get straight to the note where I can jot down whatever I need to jot down. But that does require me to swipe and to do that. And that's still a little bit of friction. I think I found an even better way for it. Now, my phone has what's called an action button on it. It's on the side. They've been around for a few generations of iPhone. And I'm going to actually program that button to open up a quick note. So if I go into settings and I go to action button right here, I tap on it. I'm going to just keep sliding over. These are all the things you can do with the action button, but I'm going to go to controls and I'm going to choose a control. And again, I'm going to search for quick note. Right there it is. I'm going to just tap quick note and now I'm done. And whenever I need to take a quick note, I don't have to slide and go into control center. I can just press the action button on the side, hold it for a second, and I immediately get into a quick note where I can write something down. So if I just type test quick note like that, and I click, click save, and then I go into Apple Notes, and I go to my quick notes right there, and here's the note that I just took today. So all I have to do is just press the action button and I can take a note. If I just press it for a little bit, it'll say hold for quick note. So you don't accidentally, you know, put it in your pocket and press it. You got to actually press it and hold it for just a little bit to get right to the quick note. 
But that is a very handy way to use your iPhone to just jot something down quickly. And it goes right into the Quick Notes folder in Apple Notes, so you can go find it and do with it whatever you need to do. So the next tip is about how to set a reminder to call somebody back. So this is the craziest thing. I get phone calls and, you know, I don't answer them. And then I see somebody's called and I have to remember to call them back. And I don't typically go into the Reminders app and type, you know, call my wife back. I, I don't do that. I kind of remember it in my head. And most of the time that works, but sometimes I forget. And then I discovered you could actually create a reminder right from the call list. So this is how this works. If you open up your phone and you go to recent calls and I can see my wife um, call me here and if you just slide from right to left you get what looks like a little clock icon right there and if you tap on it you can say remind me in an hour remind me tonight remind me tomorrow so I'll just put remind me tomorrow and that's all I have to do so now when I go to the reminders app and I go into reminders you'll see call back Rhonda tomorrow at 8 a.m. And it actually puts it right in there. I didn't have to type anything out. Again, all I did was go into the app. I swiped to the right. I went to the little clock and I just put remind me tomorrow. And that's it. And now I've got a reminder and, and reminders will actually notify me to make that call. That way I don't forget to call somebody back. What a great idea. You know, speaking of the recent call list, you can actually get somebody's call history. I had no idea that you could do this, but if you go into the phone app again, and you go to your recents, not your favorites or anything like that, but recents, and you tap on the little I, now you've got a call history right here. And you can tap on call history, and this is the entire call history that we've had outgoing calls and incoming calls and how long they lasted and when they were the date and the time that you called. Sometimes, you know, I'll call somebody and I'll leave a message and they'll say, hey man, you didn't call me. And I can go back into the call history and verify that I did call somebody or that I called a hotel and made a reservation or something like that. But the entire call history is right there. Again, you just go back to your recent call list, you tap on the little I and you get the call history right there. Tap on that and now you have an entire call history that you can view. Just a super handy little way to know whether you've communicated with somebody. So the next tip deals with messages and finding photos in messages. So for me, what I typically do, if I know somebody has sent me a photo and I try to find it, here's what I do. I go to messages, I open up their messages, and then I start scrolling through and wait a minute, there's a, a photo and... You know, maybe there's some photo in here somewhere, you know, that kind of thing. And I just try to dig around until I find what I'm looking for. But there's a much easier way to do that. Again, if you open up someone that you get messages from, you can see I've got a bunch of photos here. But if you tap on their face right up here, now you can see photos. And if you tap on photos, now, all of the photos that they've sent you show up, and you can just tap on one of them and say, show in conversation, like that, and now you get back to the very conversation where that photo uh, was sent. That's just a handy way and a quick way, much quicker way to find a photo that somebody sent you in messages. That is really, really handy. The last thing I want to talk to you about is just photo cleanup and then something that I discovered about screenshots. Now, I don't take a lot of screenshots, but occasionally I do. And this is something that's going to be helpful for me. So I'll just show you how this works. I'm going to go into photos. And I've taken a photo here of a camera that I use to make these videos. So if you wanted to clean this up, I can remove that plant in the background. So how do you do that is you tap on the little uh, icon down here for edit and then you tap on clean up right there and then you kind of circle around what you want to be cleaned up and then you wait a minute and then it removes it just like that and then you can tap done or you can tap reset if you want to bring it back. 
But that's a way you clean up um, a photo. You can get rid of something that you don't want there. But now I've got a camera here and a photo. And this is something you can't do in photos, but you can do with a screenshot. So I'm going to take a screenshot right here by pressing these two buttons. And now I've got a screenshot here. And if I just circle my camera like this, I can swipe up to see images of the camera and get results from Google. So here you can see that it's chosen a Lumix S52X, which is the camera that I have. And you can go and find that camera or find information all about that camera and the lens that's on that camera, all by just circling the photo, just like that. And you can see that it put Apple Intelligence right on the lens. If I did a bigger circle around the whole thing, and then I swipe up, it'll bring up information about the actual camera itself right here. So that is a way to use a screenshot to get information using Apple Intelligence. Um, that's, that's pretty clever. The only thing is, is it doesn't work on photos. It has to be a screenshot. But other than that, that is really a great idea. Well, for me, that's five great tips that I know I'll use for sure. Let me know in the comments below if any of these tips will work for you. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.